Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at animating some lights. We have this scene here, which is an alleyway with a volumetric light uh, kind of shining down from this light fixture. And what we're going to do is animate the light kind of swiveling back and forth as if it was being caught by some wind uh, or some sort of uh, agitation on these lines, and then the light kind of flickering on and off. Now the first thing we'll do is uh, animate this uh, light fixture. So we're going to take this and we're going to animate its rotation. And that's because the spotlight itself is linked to this fixture so that when we move it around you can see the light moving in the scene as well. So to do this we're just going to select that light, go to the animation menu, and go to uh, rotation under rotation controllers. And we're going to choose a noise controller. And what this is going to do is actually create a rotation list controller and our original controller will be there to save the position and then it's going to add a noise rotation on top of that in order to adjust the rotation. If we double click on this controller we'll get to edit its values. So here are all the values that are be use being used for this controller. If we play this back right now, the animation will be fairly erratic, as you can see. So what we want to do is adjust both the strength and the frequency. So let's bring the strength down in X, Y, and Z to about 15. And when we play that back, we should see it kind of shaking a little bit less. And then let's bring the frequency down quite a bit. You can see the representation of this graph here and we want to bring that down to maybe uh, 0.05 and we'll play that back and see how it kind of jitters around and we want it kind of more breezy and less jittery so we'll just uncheck this uh, fractal option and now it's just kind of floating around and we can kind of play with this to get you know just the look that we want but uh, for right now I think that's pretty good so now that we've kind of set the rotation of the light and it kind of blowing in the breeze, what we want to do is select the light itself. So we'll go to the light lister and select spot 01. And you can see that this is the light here. The next thing that we want to actually apply a uh, noise controller to is going to be the multiplier. So that as this uh, fixture kind of blows in the wind, seemingly some connection is broken and it kind of flickers around a little bit. So we want something that kind of will adjust this like so. To do that we'll add a noise controller to this multiplier and we'll have to do that from the uh, curve editor this time. So with the light selected we'll go to graph editor and choose curve editor. We'll just adjust this window and scroll down to open up the uh, light and its object states. And you can see the multiplier right here has been adjusted. So we want to right click on this and say assign controller and we can choose our noise float controller. So right away you see that uh, box that we got before and how this is represented in the uh, curve editor. So if we just play this back we should be able to see the light flickering quite a bit and uh, one thing that I wanted to kind of get across is this is a great thing for, you know, doing, you know, maybe lights inside of a club or something with um, a lot of flickering in a bumper animation or uh, even something that you might do for lightning. But in our case, we want something a little less erratic than this. And we don't really need as much strength. So probably set the strength down to maybe 0.7 to be the highest value that we want and we should be able to see the actual value coming up over here. So as we see this play back, one thing you'll notice is it does go into negative numbers and that's not something we necessarily want it to do. So we can check this checkbox that says greater than zero and now when we play it back you'll see it'll only be between zero and 0.7 and we're getting a little flickering happening here. So we can go in and adjust the frequency uh, to be a little bit less or a little more and you can turn on or off the uh, fractal noise if you wish. And if you want to see this be uh, a little bit more distinct in the viewport, you can kind of turn up that strength until you tune it the way that you want and then kind of put it back down. So we might go with a frequency back of 
0.05 to kind of match the way that it's swaying and maybe just keep it as fractal so we get a little bit of that flickering in there. So now we have some nice parametric noise on both our uh, motion and on our multiplier of the light. One thing I want to look at is in that curve editor, we'll just bring this back up and the controller that's been set. What we've done here is we've completely replaced the controller that was there with our noise controller. And what Max did for us automatically when we placed it through the animation menu for the rotation controller on the other object was create a list controller. And a list controller is a way of layering all these controllers together. So if I go in here, you see all I have is the noise strength, which means this is completely grayed out and I can't adjust it in any way. So if I want that flexibility here, all I have to do is right click and choose assign controller on the main multiplier controller. And instead of that noise float, what we'll choose is a float list. And you'll see you get this little plus sign here. And you can see that uh, all we have is our noise float in here as well as one available channel. So this is kind of the way that a list controller is set up. I can copy this and then I can paste it onto this available slot. So I'll copy it as a copy as opposed to an instance and then I get two noise flow controllers and the first one I'll set and replace it as a Bezier float. So I'll go in here and say assign controller and then change this to a Bezier float. So now what I have is this is kind of like the original controller that we had which is the standard max controller, a, a float controller and then the noise kind of layered on top of that. So it'll pretty much produce the same result that we had before. It's going to go between 0 and 0.7 with the noise. But we have the ability to kind of adjust both of these. So if I want to go in and just increase this light, I'll increase the light and its multiplier, but I'm still going to get the variation of 0.7 um, points in that noise controller. So this gives me a little bit more control there. The other thing that you can do is if I bring this back down, is go in and double click on this uh, list controller and I can adjust the weights of how these blend. So if I'm not concerned at all about whatever this Bezier float was set to, I can just turn that down to zero. And then this will truly be between um, zero and 0.7 as far as the multiplier goes. And if I want to set this to take that into account, I can have that set to 100 as far as the weight. And I can also do this with the noise. So if I want to increase the amount of, I guess, flickering or noise that's weighted, you can even go at higher values. So we should be able to see here in the viewport, this is kind of flickering a lot more now. And of course, if we bring it to zero, we won't have any of that. And if we bring that back up, we'll start to increase exactly how much that's blended together. So this can give you some flexibility when you're assigning controllers to your uh, lights or anything else in Max for that matter. So I'll just set that back to 100 and close it out. Lastly, when you are doing any of these animations with lights, uh, you really need to preview what you're going to see as far as the motion and the flickering of the light or anything else that's going on. Uh, the preview in the viewport is kind of nice, but we really need to render these things out. I highly recommend setting up different preview resolutions for these things because you want to be able to iterate this as fast as you can. So to do that, we can go over into uh, the comment section here and we can just, you know, set our size down to maybe uh, 320 by 214 and that's going to render out a lot quicker. We can also drop down our samples to maybe uh, one by four, one quarter, which will help there too and we can go into the processing tab and set a material override to not take into account bump maps and other things like that so just a basic clean material and now when we render this out it'll render through much much faster and all the things like the bump map and you know the anti-aliasing quality and things like that they're not necessarily going to matter for the motion of the light and how it's swaying or the flickering of the light and you can really, you know, render out whatever, 100 frames of this in order to make sure that your motion and the general lighting looks good. And then you can easily go back and just set all that stuff back. So we can set the materials back and, and set the size back. 
Um, I recommend really doing a lot of these tests so that you can um, get the motion light when you are animating anything, including lights. So hopefully that helps you with uh, animating your lights. Thank you very much.